Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the show. No. <laughs> I am doing a bunch of commissions coming up over the next probably two weeks in my side time. It'll be a little bit like day work. Instead of inking, um, I just had some opportunities to ink some unusual pieces uh, and... Uh, you know, if it sparks my interest, then I'll do it. So this is a Brian Bolin sketch, probably from a comic book convention or maybe something that he brought to a show that uh, someone purchased. This is a scan of it. Um, it was done in 2010. And uh, they want me to ink it. But but uh, what they were hoping is that I could add some pizzazz, make it more Bolin-like. You know, like what if Brian Bolin spent another two or three hours penciling it and then I inked it, or he inked it, you know, what? what is the potential of this piece? So, you know, sometimes people will ask me to do commissions like this, and honestly, there's no saving the sketch. I try to be polite, because I know that, um, you know, they're excited that they got a drawing, or maybe they're not. Maybe they got it, and they were a little disappointed in what they got. But, I mean, it's, it's sometimes very, very difficult if a penciler hasn't put at least it, it, there's there's two mm -hmm. things that can happen is they, they if they're a really solid penciler then even their sketch probably will have a lot of potential if if uh, they're not as solid it can be really problematic and even nice inks aren't going to save it like if someone is is made a lot of poor choices along the mm -hmm. way but anyway mm -hmm. so this is what we've got and what i thought i would do is um show you a little bit of the process of what i'm going to do to prepare for this piece because although i'm a brian bullen fan i would definitely not consider myself any kind of expert on his work and you know i wanted to look at some of his work on the joker how he chooses lighting how he chooses rendering on the form and what you know what his thought process is so i have some ideas but uh, why not go to the source? And plus, it makes a YouTube video. So let's do it. All right. Hope everyone is doing well. And uh, yeah, we'll just start here. And we're just going to look at these different pieces. And um, I've got uh, just some different black and white art that Boland has done. And uh, I don't think I'm going to go this detailed on the Joker piece. Um, <laughs> that might be overkill. But we'll see. We'll see. Another thing, too, is sometimes people will want backgrounds behind commissions, and that's another thing that uh, you'd be surprised. A lot of times the piece is so precariously drawn in the first place, putting anything behind it is just going to compositionally destroy the the teeter-totter um, uh, base uh, sort of design of a piece. It's very, I mean, I talk about it a lot. Like, art can withstand art, meaning a, a drawing, um, can withstand only so much before it starts to look odd even to someone that maybe doesn't have a trained eye and a lot of times a wonky drawing kind of is as good as it's ever going to get and that's not an insult that's to say that that a drawing can be crooked and kind of work and if you all of a sudden straightened out an eye that was maybe um, off on a drawing, like that was the most obvious thing is, uh, this is kind of going on a tangent, but it's worthwhile to understand this too. But but just say that like he had drawn this eye kind of like at a weird angle. But, but what sometimes will happen, that almost works in a funny way. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I try to give bad examples of stuff, and I, I, it's almost difficult for me sometimes to do it. It still looks weird, but, I mean, this in theory could work. But um, what will happen is the way that the person drew it, everything kind of is crooked in a way where it sort of works together. And you start fixing an eye that's crooked, and all of a sudden the ear really looks crooked, or the arm really looks even more crooked, and the balance of all the things together kind of made it work so let's do this really quick i want to pull up a joker example first at the very least so uh okay so we can look at this um as a rendering idea and then let me i'm gonna have the commission kind of on its own uh thing so i can always sort of pull it up and just kind of glance at it while we're doing this so this is fun and it's like i'm killing two birds with one stone i get to give you guys a little bit of content and i think you know um I, you know, I've mentioned I've been doing tons and tons of lessons and reviews, and um, it's very, very challenging because I'm dealing with a lot of different artists at a lot of different skill levels with a lot of different questions. 
And what it's doing for me is every day I'm getting challenged five, 10 times a day and, and solving drawing problems that I hadn't maybe necessarily faced in my own work or, or you have to come up with a solution for someone. So it's, it's incredible the um, amount of information that I'm extracting every day um, from it. I was explaining to someone where it's like, there's really no drawing problem right now that I don't think that I couldn't solve it's just some of them you haven't done yet. You might like, like what, what ends up happening is I'll know like 70 to 80% of the solution. And then I just need to quickly reference, um, the things that I don't know. Maybe it's an anatomical thing. It doesn't mean that there's a mastery of it. It just means that there's a, um, familiarity with just about anything that you would face in a drawing at this point. There's no perspective thing that I couldn't figure out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's just, what do you have memorized and what do you don't like, like, you know, uh, I couldn't fake my way through. Um, I always use guns as a as a point of reference. Now I don't have a bunch of gun types memorized. So if I was going to draw guns, the the gun itself wouldn't be the challenge to draw. It would just be knowing the mechanics of a gun. So one thing that I I'm already noticing is black on this guy's suit might look very very cool. In fact, it could look very very cool. And even like lighting on the the tie might be the way to go. Um, with a white background because initially like you, know, you see this and you're kind of thinking well the joker suit is usually what purple i think is is that like what color his like if he's wearing a dress suit and the tie is green i'm not sure <laughs> but anyway um but uh yeah so that's interesting now would i want to put a light source on the face you can see that in this we'll darken the sketch a little bit so we can see a little bit better so we'll pull it a kind of silly dark just so we can see. So he's he's got the a classic bowl and lighting cue is from up here going across the 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 face, but usually with a pretty high contrast thing to it. So um, I'm liking the idea of the suit black. I'm liking the idea of maybe the lapels catching some light, like maybe in this area here. It's funny because I have a Dale Keown um, Hulk piece that I need to do something similar to do to, and I have a Joe Casada Daredevil piece I need to work out a background for. Um, I've already inked the piece. Joe drew it. There's just no background, and the guy that got the commission wanted to know if I could put in like a Gothic church. So we'll have a few of these little um, problem solving uh, pieces. Oh, and a David Finch death dealer commission that that the person wants me to maybe try to do some background on not maybe but but try it so we'll see what happens so let's get back to this okay he does tend to put a little bit of rendering in the eyes i think that oops i i think on this piece it could work because i can do very very fine lines so it might actually look cool to have some lines through here just kind of making mental notes i'm not actually working on this piece for probably another week or so um but it is on deck i think it's the fourth in line of the commissions that i'm doing third third maybe um uh, two it might be the third piece i have a voodoo piece daredevil I think this one is next. Okay, so and the hair on this has got more of the spaghetti um, things where this is not as much. But, you know, that might be interesting, too, is to spaghetti this up a little bit. Um, I'm not going to draw on it digitally. We're just getting an idea. And then the, there's a flower on this thing. This is cool, though. I like this idea. I think it could work. The tie is very big. Um, but if I had a light source, I might be able to hit the lapels, like, right here or Let's see and then the shirt has got kind of pinstripes and folds so I can maybe add some folds there so just this one piece even though it's not even really at the same position has given me a lot of ideas already um, what else cast shadow over the teeth maybe make it like super high contrast this will be very very dark but you know, if the light is coming from this. So the problem, I actually, I, when I did a lesson yesterday, I was talking about the difference of putting lighting on flesh versus lighting on clothes. Um, you have to be kind of careful because um, they, they're different materials. It's just one of those things where if you start lighting this, you know what I mean? You really need to commit to it. You can't just like all of a sudden decide, oh, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow like right here on the head that's like a big black shape. 
and then not follow through with it. It's just going to look like some weird thing. And on clothing, you can kind of get away sometimes with that more. But do you see how Boland has very deep inset... Um, what would you call it? Creases. And then this. But, you know, you could... And also, you like I was telling the person um, with the review, uh, or it was a lesson, um, to, to really make this stuff simple and direct. So, you know... Don't get too fussy with it, and and it'll it'll probably work better as a drawing. But you know, I mean, you could start to go in. I wouldn't go that far with this commission side. That line got a little away from me, but um, you know, what I mean, like the that idea. You know, where you're you're going in and doing much much heavier creases could, in theory, work. You could have something along those lines, and then pull the shadows much deeper here. this would pull more but you have to remember there's form here there's a big tendon or something I don't know what it's called that kind of runs down there I don't I don't concern myself with the names <laughs> and even in here you could have this start to drop down maybe come back up creep up But again, I wouldn't do that on this particular piece. It would just be too high contrast. You'd really have to work it through the whole thing. Um, and this would have all been black. I'm just going to take this out really quick. Okay, so let's look at a different piece. Yeah, it was interesting. I've been talking a lot about lighting and perspective. And, and um, it can really start to fuck with people's minds. Um, and understandably so. Because it's... it's um, you're kind of going down a rabbit hole of a lot of planes, meaning um, shapes on the head. I, t I talk a lot about this, too, where I show um, the topography in, in a um, three-dimensional way. Let me do it like this. down for a second it's kind of but yeah i mean if if this was a wireframe you know you start to see the geometry more and as things go further away from you the lines will start to get tighter but this is all a topography you know whatever you know and then this curves over here this is a form this is a form but this is all three-dimensional stuff uh, in his eyes this goes back into space and then it starts to come back around as it goes over the brow so it goes into the eye socket comes back around these are lumps of flesh like this each one of these is its own wrinkle and same deal there's this type of thing going on around it when you can feel this everywhere and this is going to be the stuff that you render on you know so you're you're you don't need to draw all this you just need to be aware that it's there and sort of in your mind project it over the drawing it'll definitely help and and it's where how these guys are placing their lighting but again it can be very overwhelming to a um, an artist that's learning it's just there's like levels of um information that you take in you know when he's lighting these knuckles what he's doing is he's got the bones you know, and the light, if the light is coming from, where is the light? The light's kind of everywhere on this one. But, uh, you know, this knuckle is going to create, that's another bone to say. You know, if the light is coming from here, this knuckle is going to cast a shadow. And so these aren't just arbitrary shapes that you're putting in here. They're cast shadows off of these objects you know a, a bone on a 
hand is a three-dimensional shape. And a lot of times what I try to do with people too is I, I've been showing them like, um, take that same idea of the bone. I'll just make it a blocky for you. You know, if that's a, if that's a bone in your finger, and even it might even go up like this more. It's much easier to light something like this, you know. But there's subtleties to the form. But if a light is coming from here, well, this is going to be white. This will be gray. This will be white. This will be gray. Anything on this side would be black. And if there's something behind it, like right here. This is going to cast a shadow. That so that would be a shadow here, but but that's how you build form, and it's the same for th stuff like this. This is all three dimensional shape. It goes up. Uh, uh. This is a box that sits here, and a box that goes in the space, and then a box that comes out. So it goes in, up, and out, back, and even here, this comes out and then back in. These are planes, and there's um, even a plane here. Check out the Asaro head, A S A R O. I was, I was, will recommend that for people. So let's just look at the Joker now for a second. So on this, yeah, he's got a very kind of. It's an interesting lighting. It's like. Um, I guess it's coming from down here. Here, kind of hidden here. He is well. This is curving down. He's getting. It's almost like like it's probably a large light, like something this size, size kind of hitting the whole side of his head. Because these shadows don't drop. If you look at these hands, the shadow is more of a core shadow, meaning it runs through the middle of the tube. If this is a tube. The shadow is meandering through here. It's not at the bottom, which would lead us to believe that light is coming from here. But for whatever reason, this, uh, yeah, see, this is, this shadow is falling over this way and then this is falling. So, so yeah, he's getting hit from, from, with light from about the side here. It's nice, but this is a big plane right here. And this is a crease and that's why it's got a shadow. This is the opposite side of the nose, so shadow. This, if you think of it as a 3D form, let me take off some of this. <laughs> oh, actually, I can do this. Nice. All right. Good. Sometimes I do, like, this is like three planes is a simple way to think of it is you've got a front plane of the eyelid. This goes back into space. And then this goes back into space. You see that? So front plane, side plane, that. But if the light is coming from here, well, this is maybe we'll have a little bit of gray, but this is going to be the darkest plane, and that's why everything on this side of his uh, eye is going black, do you see? So this is the curve. Okay. He's got a little bit of rendering here. Da 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 da. Okay, we can shut this guy. Okay, that's the full piece. It's nice, different jacket than what I'm dealing with in my piece. But still, we can look at the lips, how he's rendering the lips. There's a little bit of rendering on the gums. So rendering on the lips, maybe a little bit of rendering on the gums. I'm not gonna put spittle, <laughs> this right here. I wouldn't put anything like that on his lips. This is more clean cut Joker. He's handsome. He's a he's gonna take you to dinner and then kill you. Okay, so let's do this. No joker on this, so it's one to look at a little bowl and a little bowl bowl. This is nice. Really nice page. This would go for so much money now. The way our prices are going, it's in, just insane the numbers that this stuff is fetching. So a page like this with Batman and the Joker, forget about it. This could go for a hundred grand. 
I, I bet it's 60,000 to 100,000, just depending on how psycho the bitter, bitter, bitters would be. This is great, too. It's nice. Okay, yeah, this is cool. Okay, so he puts a little bit of black in the hair here. Let's pull this thing back up. So. Oh, I can't even. Let's get an idea. A little bit of rendering on the ear. A little rendering on each crease. So I could possibly render up off of these. Render up off of these even maybe put a little bit of a lighting cue like that, you know, kind of thing. Might look good. You know, have a little bit of the creases, more creases. So do you see why this is helpful? It just gives you cues. I, I've never done this before. In fact, this is the first time I've, I've ever done a commission where I've actually referenced before I did it. But I figured, eh, you know what? I'm always trying to improve, honestly. It's not just like lip service when I say shit like that. I'm very, very competitive with myself. And, and there's just literally no point in me staying where I'm at with my skill level. It, it makes no sense at all. So the only thing I can do is try to get better. <laughs> right? It's like, if I'm going to draw, there's literally no point in me just spinning my wheels. So with that, you have to just keep learning harder stuff or, or more stuff, whatever it is. It's not necessarily harder. Nothing is really that much harder. I've said that for years, even when I was a dumbass and didn't really truly know what it meant. It's just the amount of effort you're willing to put into a drawing is hard. But, but I truly don't believe that a horse is any harder to draw. Because people always say, like, a horse is, like, one of the hardest things to draw. A horse is no harder to draw than a Ferris wheel. Um, there just might be more more stuff to figure out. But it's just, it's like, how far are you going to dig in? A jacket like this might give you more trouble than a horse. Who knows, you know? It just depends on the circumstance of the drawing more than anything. And then how, how, how much are you going to be committed to trying to work it out? And then, and then obviously, how much knowledge and experience you have. Those are huge factors. Um, but I've, I've socked in enough hours where there's no excuses for me not to um, be able to figure stuff out now. I can't use that as, as a, um, an out. If you're less experienced, you can be a little more um, forgiving. This is cool. I always like when he does stuff like this. But again, different jacket. This is more like a night coat. And this is more like a suit jacket. The tie is kind of bugging me on this piece. I honestly think that I may um, really work with that a little bit. It's just, it's such a big shape. The black idea of black, like with the jacket black and maybe this kind of coming out of the shadows a little bit, like this would be black, this would be black. Having a little bit of a highlight maybe on it or like a little highlight here, this would be black and black and that. And sort of, um, maybe even like this this would be black this would be black and a little rendering here and then this would be black and this would be black with a little bit of rendering here that might help it and even uh, black here black here with light so it's kind of like there's sort of like a room light that's kind of hitting everything in the middle the middle of its its shape might work but again it's one of those things where the light is going to affect the clothing more than it's going to affect his face in any kind of hard shadow way because you start putting shadows on a face you are in you're in for it there's no you know it's either a very light source with just like light rendering and maybe a few of these this is kind of what i was talking about is like this this is probably a better route not just for this piece but in general is is a shadow is starting to form, but when you start doing heavier black, then it, you, you're going to have to commit to all the flesh that's showing. Flesh it up. Let me just get out of this. So this is fun. I mean, you know, it's a little jumbled in terms of execution of the video, but uh, it's okay. 
I wanted to try to put more drawing videos up, and I know um, now we've really got some good stuff going on because Finch has been doing awesome <laughs> drawing tutorials. So it's like I can't, I can't slack. I need to make sure I'm actually giving you guys even better information. Not, not in a competitive way with him. I just mean that it's like, like you know, the bar has been raised on YouTube. When, when, when someone as good as David is giving you drawing lessons, then you can't just be like, "Oh, this is how you draw a square in perspective." He's going to be like, I'm going to draw a square. I'm going to put a sword on it. I'm going to light it. It's going to be in outer space. And it's going to be in three-point curvilinear perspective. He's like, Rich, you're too much. Uh, okay, so let's look at this. So this has got a little bit, like like you, we can see here, he's done the shadows that we've seen. So that's a com uh, consistent thing. The shadow and the socket. So we've got that we've got that and on this one he did the nose shadow i don't personally think and remember the pieces flipped uh, the nose shadow doesn't seem to really help the um shot on this if, if anything it just starts to look like a weird thing i think on a comic book page where there's more detail and stuff going on around it it's a little more forgiving but i think the line work idea will work better on this piece than this heavy cast shadow let me click on this one because, yeah, what's balancing this out is this shadow here, the black behind him. It's a whole compositional thing. It's not just this shape. This will just look like a big black booger hanging under his nose or some weird, like, it's like, did you spill ink on his face? So that's a decision I make. This is interesting. This almost has a Wolf's Portachio vibe to me. It's not funny. It looks a little bit like his, his wet work stuff. You give this guy, like, vampire ears and uh, some glowing armor. <laughs> You know, okay. have a fist here with uh, a, like Grail's um, <laughs> stick coming up, and it's like it's Portachio right there. <laughs> it's coincidence, I'm sure. God, the scene was so crazy when I first read this book. I was like, "What in the world just happened? And what is Gordon wearing?" <laughs> He's like, Rich, you're too much. You make me laugh. You made me laugh, Joker. You're crazy. I like it. All right. Oh, okay, let's see this one. This is closer to our outfit that we're dealing with. I like the size of this tie better. See, now I'm wondering. Let me see something here. All right, what is going on? Oh, here we go. Yeah, this tie is too big. I, don't know, I just want to see something. That looks so much better, right? Who's with me? Isn't this fun? You're getting to work with Uncle Rich. <laughs> that looks way cooler. It's a little smaller. Maybe take it a little bigger. Oh, yeah. What I'm doing is I'm defocusing my eyes and I'm just comparing all the shapes. This is very nice right here. This is perfect. In fact, I'm actually gonna, um, uh, let me save this. I'll call this B, 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 B. Okay, yeah, I wanna, oh, PDF. No, I don't wanna save it as a fucking PDF. Oh, it's cause it's for print. All right. That's cool. I like the size of this. The placement might not be exactly where I want it, but I'm feeling the size. So what, what I'm looking at, what I'm keen in, and, and again, I completely defocus my eyes. So I'm almost looking at this blurry. There's no focus. If anything, I'm almost staring. Where am I looking? Let me let me see if I can do this for you. Let me, uh, I'm going to put this in full screen mode so I can. Uh... All right. So when I'm judging the size of the tie, I'm looking. I have to like I have to blank my brain out. All right, where do I look? I'm I'm staring somewhere here, and I'm I'm matching this shape in my mind with a a shape I see here. So what it is is there is a size relationship to this right here, and do you see the reverse of it? That's how my brain works. This works and sometimes what i'll do is i'm not matching it perfectly sometimes i'm looking for a level of uncomfortableness believe it or not i will look for something that is slightly askew just the tiniest bit to create what tension and do i do this intentionally 
Yes. Do you notice it in the drawing? No, but yes. <laughs> the way that I lay out things, it's, I use subtlety with my pieces, it's, but it's there. And I'll turn something, like instead of having it here, I'll just move it just the tiniest bit. I mean, literally, like sometimes I'll just nudge it a little and there'll be this, there's this level of like, ah, oh, fuck, it feels like it's gonna fall or it's like, it's just off balance. That's where I like it. So anyway, you guys are like, Rich, you are too much. Am I? Or am I just enough? <laughs> it is true though. You guys are just lucky that I that I explain this to you. And all the pros that are lurkers on my channel, you're welcome. <laughs> I know you guys, you, you won't comment. Who even knows if you've subscribed? Shame on you. It's all right. At, at conventions, they'll tell me they watch the channel. <laughs> it's like, Rich, you're so funny. <laughs> All right, so what do we got here? A little bit of rendering on the lips, a little bit on the gums, the nice shadow on the um, ear. I like this a lot, and I like the line work here. But we're getting a lot of really, really good ideas. I, I'm digging it. This is neat right here. This is pretty cool. If, if I were to pull some darkness around this, it might look really, really nice. Have a little bit of that shadow thing going on here. The only thing, though, is I have to remember that if I've made the decision to light his jacket black, and I was gonna have shadow, shadow, light, then I can't all of a sudden just steal another light source and go, oh, okay, but then for here, because this looks cool, I'm gonna do this. It can send mixed signals and it can also throw off what? Our balance. And also it can draw the eye. And even if you're not a professional, something will feel off. If, if he had black in this eye socket right here, I know that's an extreme thing, but it's impossible to enjoy the design of this with some randomly placed shadow here that maybe the artist, not Bolin, but say someone emulating Bolin, but he's sort of combining two pieces. He really liked how it like one, I mean, that almost looks better right there. Like I said, it's, I can keep nudging stuff and make things work that probably shouldn't, but that's not um, a good, th it, it is a good and a bad thing. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you can't just willy-nilly put 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 um shadows on stuff. If you start like, you know, oh, I think I saw Jim Lee on a Batman drawing. He had a shadow here. All of a sudden it's like, what is going on? You've got light clearly coming this way because it's creating cast shadows here. Um but then you, you know, if you put a big shadow here because you saw Travis on a Wildcats piece, you know, have something like that. It can start to really um D destroy any sort of flow to the drawing so renderer beware this is nice and again this is his subtle lighting it's he's got the eye socket shadow and then this shadow and then the nice cool shadow here and then this it's very consistent do you see this little cast shadow here little cast shadow here but you can tell that the where's the light coming from on this can you see it it has to be coming from this way why because these shadows are, well, it's coming kind of from, let me grab a different color so we really are. Oh, damn you. Damn you. Uh, it's coming from about right here because this is putting a shadow underneath it. This, and the light is like this. These honestly start to drop it's a little off it would be more right here it's okay though i mean uh the fabric is going this way so the plane the plane that the shadows are dropping on is um, i'm trying to feel the actual form now it's too steep yeah he's gonna like right at one and it starts to lift do you see it lifting and do you see how the direction of these lines lift with it and what's happening here they're starting to get tighter and tighter together why my patrons know what do i call it train tracks anything going in the distance or wrapping around stuff is going to get tighter and tighter together until it's gone these lines will get more and more tight just this alone 
will make your stuff look better. But you have to understand form. You have to realize that this shape around the Joker's neck is a collar that goes like this. You know? So it starts to go away from us. And as it goes away, it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And then as it will come back out, it'll get more relaxed. But you know what I mean? This is what's going on here is it's... That's the full color, you know. Okay. Do 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 do. Look at him. Hi, Jokey. Did I ever tell you the one about? I'm very consistent. This this little rendering here. I'm surprised he didn't actually render on the gums a little bit on this one. Because he's got a little bit of rendering on the teeth. Generally speaking, when he's rendering on the teeth, he goes in with a little bit of that. And I think it would look nice. This one really looks like Jack Nicholson. It's funny. It's a very, very cartoony. But, man, that really looks like Jack Nicholson's face right there. It's quite subtle, but really, really cool. This is great. Beautiful. So we could have a little rendering here. So this was really... This ended up being very, very helpful. And this is similar to the lighting thing that I was talking about. But he just did a more complex... Um, version of it oh and then this is nice so remember to put some ties hanging down at some point something along the lines of that so okay and then you know with this if the light's coming from above you would put little cast shadows is the um you see here he did it this is coming out from underneath it. So the fabric is above it. And he did do it, though. Do you remember I had the lighting? I said that, that the, everything was going to kind of get lit from the middle a little bit. So each shape is getting hit from the middle. He pulled a little more light, and even this. So remember mine was like this. Black, black, light. Black, black, light. I mean, it's it's these are what I call comic book brands. He just made it. He's got the light sources a little bit stronger here. So this got lit up more, but, you know same deal and then in here this will be open right Let's see yeah and he um i'm curving my lines going like this but you can do it like this i still don't have a really hard rule book on why and when i should have um curving out or in but it's definitely something like that would be remember i was saying that like i'll know 70 to 80 percent of the answer so this would be a 30 percent uh falls into a 30 percent category where it's like i'm aware that people do this i'm not 100 percent uh sure why it would i would have to how i would learn this is i would start to look at real life and and see when shadows curve this way as opposed to curving this way so it's definitely based on the form, but I guarantee Boland probably research. Do you see this one is curving this way? But yeah, so these would, would curve this way. And this, I still kind of feel like that would curve that way. And his didn't though. So, you know, you don't have to copy it exactly or, or even, you know, I, I honestly, I always say beware of learning from an artist. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> I always go to a real source and then make my judgment call on which way I'm going to play it. Because there's really no, I mean, there's there's right and wrong. I mean, you could argue the same thing with this, is like this curves this way and then curves like this. But who's to say it couldn't have curved like that and then like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, could the shadow have done this instead? The only way that you would know is to to get something similar to this. I mean, you figure three-dimensional form here is... You know, if it was a wireframe... Oh, sorry. will come out. This is kind of its own thing. You know, you can keep subdividing the geometry. It just depends on um, how you how you see the costume designed. But 
one, two. This is the simplest way to think of it, three. But remember, this is a plane that comes out. It's an underplane, you know? It's going back into space to the eye socket. And the eye is sitting in this cavity here. But this is this is where the ridge is. The brow is here. This is the underneath of the brow. B row. Underplane. This is See, when you look at it as simple geometry, how much easier it is to peg all this stuff in. And this gets a little, it's a little bit of a gray area for me in terms of the planes. Um, but I can work it out other ways. What it is, is, and I've recommended this to people, is go to what you know. And, and then you can fill in the blanks. So it's like, I wasn't sure starting from the eye right here exactly how these planes go, but I know that there's a ridge that goes here. And so once I start doing that, then I have less geometry to subdivide right here. So that will help you be able to do things like that. And then we have to remember that there's and you see this anatomy is here. He's putting this stuff in. It's really nice. It's a very solid head. Geometry is geometry. All right, I'm going to end the video here because if this gets way, way too long, nobody will watch it. So, all right, have a good day and uh, do your own dissecting of people's work and have fun with it, as Joker would say. Ha, 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 ahu, ahu, hoo, 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 er. That's what Joker would tell you to do. <laughs> all right, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.